Hi, we are working in chapter 14, which relates work and for uh, energy and using the principle of work and energy. We here we have a problem that we have one boy sliding down, like he start here at point, let me call this point A and this point B. He start here at point A and slides all the way this slope that the shape is given by that function. And it starts at A, at rest, and they want us to find the speed at the end. So they want us to find the speed, which is speed of B. And one important thing that they say also, that the slide is smooth. Smooth. Okay, so if we do a free body diagram, of the boy in any position of the slide. Let's do it like that. So if we do it in a generic position, let me do it in a generic position, and this will be my x and y, right? And I take my slide out. So to do just the free body diagram of the boy, what forces do I have? I will have a normal force and the weight. Since the normal force is, uh, there is no motion between, in the direction of the normal force, I can say that the work done by that normal force is zero. We have talked about that before, because the definition of work, right, is the integral dot product. So these two has to be in the same direction, which means So if this, there is no motion in the direction of the force, we have no displacement. So the work done by the normal force all along the trajectory is equals to zero. So if we use our principle of work and energy, we can write that the work done by non-conservative forces is equal to the total energy in position two. In this case, will be position B minus the total energy in position one, right? And we see that here, the only force acting at all along my trajectory is the weight. And the weight, I can say that it's a conservative force. So I can treat it as potential energy. Therefore, here, this is zero, and I have that there is conservation of energy. So let's analyze position one and position two. Position one will be, this will be my position one, and this will be my position two. Since I start by rest, I can say that the kinetic energy at one is zero because I start at rest, right? Since the only force that I have is the weight, I can start my datum. So if I put my datum over here, I will have this height as potential energy. So my potential energy will be positive, and will be that height, which is 0 0.75, right? And then I have kinetic energy at the end, which is velocity of the boy, which is actually exactly what I want to find, and then potential energy at the end, which is zero because we already lost all the potential energy of the weight because that's where we put our that, so it's zero. Therefore, from here I can say that one half mass velocity v squared plus zero is equals to zero minus my potential energy. And this is equals to zero, right? So as you see, the mass goes, and I can say that the velocity will be equals to g times 0 0.75 times two square root of that. So the velocity was very easy to find which is equals to 12.13 meters over second. Okay, uh, and the second question we are asked to find is the normal force at that position. To find the normal force at that position, we have to do the free body diagram, which is very similar to this one but not on a generic position, but at the end of a, my slope. So I, I have my slope over here, right? And I have my little boy 
over here. And then I have the weight. And I have the normal force. And then I want to do that equals to the kinetic diagram, you remember? So I got my little body over here. And what forces do I have? I have what accelerations do I have, what, which is inertial forces. So I have normal acceleration and tangential acceleration. So in a, if I add forces in the normal direction, I found that weight, negative weight plus normal is equals to mass normal acceleration. And as you recall, the normal acceleration is the velocity squared over radius of curvature. So my normal force will be equals to the weight plus mass velocity squared over radius of curvature. But I am not given the radius of curvature. I'm given the, the equation. As you recall, let me do it over here. This is 1 plus the y dx square 3 dy dx is the second derivative. So dy dx is equals to 2 times, right? 0 0.075 times 2 times x. And the second derivative will be equal to 0 0.075 times 2. And if I evaluate that, my coordinate system is at zero, so I have to evaluate that at zero. This is zero then. And this is, well, this is just the multiplication of those two numbers, right? Therefore, my radius of curvature will be equals to 1 to the 3 half, which is just 1, right, divided by this 2, and this is 0 0.15. That's it. This is 0 0.15. So my radius of curvature gives me a value of 6.6 .6 periodic, and this is given in meters. And I substitute this number over here, and the weight is also given because it's mass times gravity. So from here, I get that the normal force is equals to mass times gravity plus mass times the, uh, the velocity that I just found over radius of curvature. And solving for that force, I get that the normal force is equals to 1,275.3 newtons. I want to, you to compare the problems that we are doing for this chapter with the problems that we did for the previous chapter, which is analysis of kinetic of particles using uh, the equation of motion, force equals mass and acceleration. We had a very similar problem that uh, allowed us to calculate the normal force. And in that case, in the problem that we solved using the equation of motion, the velocity was given. In this case, we were able to find the velocity and then further calculate the normal force.